If you have your Bibles with you tonight, turn with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. We're going to continue in our Partner with God series. How many of you have been enjoying our Partner Partners with God series this month? It's been good, good stuff. I'm telling you, what it is, what it is, is we're, going, we're going over the promises and the privileges that we have as we partner with God. All the things that God has in store for you and I as we, as we draw closer to Him, amen, as we walk with Him, the promises and the privileges, amen, that God wants you to know that you have in your life as you partner with Him. I mean, there's no partner like God, amen? There's no partner like God. Because God will never leave you nor forsake you, right? He won't. He never has. And He's not going to continue. And, and He's not going to start now, amen? He's not going to start to leave you uh, alone now. He's not going to forsake you. Proverbs 3, verse 1. Bible says, it says, My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Let's pray this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word, for we know that Your Word definitely brings life. And Lord, we pray right now, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that, Lord God, we have come to receive your word. We have come to apply your word into our lives. Lord, help us in doing so. And Father, we pray right now, Lord God, for strength, Lord God, for those, Lord God, who are weak. We pray, Lord God, for wisdom, Father God, in our lives. We pray for discernment, Lord. We pray for healing, Lord God, for those who may be sick in body. And Father God, just as you have restored our lives, Lord God, from the way it was, Lord, to the way it is now, you are continuing that transformation within our lives. And Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you, Lord God, Father God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you love us. And Father, we are so blessed to be children of the Most High. Have your way tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, amen. amen and amen. Knowing God's will in your life is one of the most important things that we need to value. Knowing the direction that God has for your life. How many know that God wants to direct you? Do you believe that? Do you believe that God wants to guide you in your in your day to day he really does god seeks for god seeks for you to make right choices how many of you would love to only make right choices in your life no more bad decisions no more no more uh, opening doors that that shouldn't have you know you know weren't meant to be opened in your life God wants you to make right choices. God wants you to be blessed. And we are blessed in obedience, aren't we? We're blessed in obedience. We're blessed as we listen to the voice of the Lord. We're blessed. And many people usually, you know, mainly associate blessings with, with material things. But that's, that's, not, that's nothing compared to the blessings that God has for your life. It's not just material things. It's those things that, that money can't buy. It's those things that you can't get out in the world. 
that only God can give. So when we look for certain things in the world or in things or even in people, we end up coming to a sad place in our lives where, where we feel like we've been let down. And God says, I'm the provider of the real blessings in your life. And so we need God to guide us more than ever. Tonight we're going to be looking at how we receive guidance and direction from God. Tonight's message is titled, Together I Can Receive Guidance. Because we're talking about partnering with God. So what, is the, what are the privileges of partnering with God? What are the blessings? What are the promises that God has for you and I? Why should you partner with God? Would be the question, right? Pastor, why should I partner with God? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight through God's word. I read this quote. It says, To know the will of God is our greatest knowledge. To do the will of God is our greatest achievement. It's one thing to know it. As we mentioned last service, it's one thing to hear it, but it's another thing to actually do it. Right? Right? We need to put action. Number one this evening is God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Turn to your neighbor and tell him God has a plan for you. Psalm 37 verse 23 says the Lord directs the steps of the godly. The godly, the person who decides to follow Christ. God knows we're not perfect. Godly doesn't mean free from, godly doesn't mean that you're free from sin. <laughs> we're still going to, we're still going to trip up. And God says that he's going to guide the godly. That's you and I, those who, those who seek him. Those who say, God, I know who I am without you, and I know that I need you. I know that I'm without when I'm trying to do things on my own. And so, Lord, I need you to direct my steps. If any of you have those watches where, you know, it, it checks your steps, Maybe you use your phone to do that and you, you look at your watch and you look at your phone and you say, wow, I took, I took 8,000 steps today. Or maybe you look at it and you think, and, and, and you see, wow, I took 500 steps. I can, I can feel it. I didn't do much today. All the steps that we take in life, the choices that we make, we need God to direct us we need him to, to guide us. The very fact that God created you in his image, sent his son to die for you, ought to give you a great sense of self-worth. That God has a plan. That he does have a purpose for you. Not only does the Lord direct our steps, but God also directs our stops, doesn't he? He directs our steps and he directs our stops. What does that mean? That means that God opens doors and God also closes doors, doesn't he? A big prayer in my life is, God, you open doors that no man can shut and you close doors that no one can open. I don't want to open that door that you want closed. I don't want to go through that door. I know it's not for me. So God, please guide me. Because I'm, I'm willing to follow. I'm willing to follow. And that's, you know, you know it's, it's, it's in those times where, you know, it's like, God, I'm ready to follow. It's like, wow, be careful what you say, right? 
Because God is gonna, God is gonna take you at your word. And he's gonna say, all right, then come on, follow me. But we need those doors to close that aren't of him. And this is what God does. Sometimes we see a closed door and we think, no, no, I really, I really wanted that. And God says, I closed it for a reason. I got something better up ahead for you. See, the open doors and closed doors in our lives are directed by God. Why? Because he has a plan and a purpose. A plan and a purpose. God has also promised to reveal his plan to us. The Bible says that confusion is not from God, right? God doesn't want us to be confused. He doesn't, he doesn't want us, you know, scratching our head like, um, what should I do? No, God wants to reveal things to us. God wants to reveal himself to us. He wants to reveal the direction that he seeks for us to go in our life. God takes no joy in watching us stumble through life. Trying to figure out his will. Psalm 32 verse 8 says the Lord, he says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. He says, I will advise you and watch over you. You need to highlight that in your Bible. You need to put that in your phone, save it somewhere. Because that's God's promise. That's his promise to you and I. His word says so. The word of God that, that, was, that is inspired by God. It says that he seeks the best pathway for your life. Psalm 73, verse 24 says, You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. God is taking us somewhere. God seeks for us to follow. and He says, come on, come on. We're going, we're going to a glorious place. I have a glorious destiny for you. It's the, best, it's the best road for you. Because you're not alone. Because on this road, I am strengthening you. On this road, I am guiding you. On this road, I am holding you. I am protecting you. I like this quote said by Mark Twain. He, said it's, he says, it's not the part of the Bible that I don't understand that bothers me. It's the part of the Bible that I do understand. <laughs> Why is that? Why? Because we know what God is telling us. And so now we're accountable for that. We're accountable. God says, all right. I've given you the direction. Now what are you going to do? Can you imagine if we followed God like we followed our mapping system on our phones? We follow those things blindly, don't we? You know, you have, you have no idea where, where you know, I don't, I don't know what the names are nowadays, you know, where, where Siri's taking you. You have no idea where that phone is leading you, but you follow. It says make a left, and guess what? You make a left. Make a right, you make a right. Everything he or she says, you do it. And I think, man, can you imagine if we followed God like that? Can you imagine? Can you imagine how blessed we would be if God says, make a right, and you say, all right, God, I'm making a right. And he says, he says, all right, uh, in about 600 feet, you're going to be making a left. All right, I'm doing it, God. I'm following your guidance. 
And then, and, and then God throws in these, you know, like, 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 like your phone does too. Um, I found you a shortcut. You can save three minutes. What do you do? Oh, except sign me up. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if it's through, if it's through, you know, the neighborhood. I don't care. I'm saving three minutes. <laughs> I'm following whatever you're saying. And we know that God saves us time. He does this, he does this through prayer. Amen. As we pray, we're saving time in our life. We're saving time as we pray. Did you know that? If you want, if you want more time in your day, start praying. Do it. You think I'm crazy, huh? <laughs> Start doing it. See what happens. God is gonna, God is gonna make your day so efficient. You're gonna be able to, to accomplish things that you've never been able to accomplish before as you seek him. And at the end of the day, you're, you'll still have your sanity. You'll still be able to go home and smile at your family. God wants to take us to the, on these shortcuts, per se, where we can save time in our life. But then there's routes that God needs us to take, amen? He, he needs us to, to travel on. But we're not alone. I think most of us really don't have any trouble at all obeying the will of God if it's what we want, right? It's not difficult to be obedient to the voice of the Lord when it is in line with what you had in mind. See, many times we want we want to have a little input in the decision-making process. God, I'm fine as long as I have a little, you know, I can throw a little bit of my ideas in my plans. What we need to remember in our lives is that God is sovereign. What does that mean? That means that he is the supreme being. He has supreme power. He has supreme reign. He's sovereign. You can't forget that. Don't ever forget that God knows what's best for you and I. So God has promised to reveal his plan to you. I want to look at a couple of steps here that Solomon gives us in our text he gives us a couple of steps to receiving God's guidance in our lives. That's found in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. When he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So let's look at a couple of steps here that Solomon I'm sure would desire for us to take in our lives as well to receive God's guidance in our life. Number one is trust him. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you need to trust God. See, God will not forsake those who trust in him. You need to remember this. Psalm 9 verse 10 says, those who know your name trust in you. Let me read that again. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. He says, Lord, you have a flawless record. You've never forsaken anyone. 
So why would I think that you're going to start with me? Why, why would I allow my mind to believe the lie that you're going to start right now to be a failure in my life? Because up to this date, you've never forsaken anyone. And so you need to wrap your mind around that, church, in those, in those difficult times in your life where you may, be, where you may feel forsaken where you may feel that God has maybe left you. You really know he hasn't, but the enemy lies and it, and it seems so true sometimes, doesn't it? It seems so real. But you need to stand on his word. Psalm 910, write it down. See, don't worry about five or 20 years from now. God wants you to just be concerned with obeying him. <laughs> don't think so far ahead in your life. When it comes to trusting him, when it comes to him working things out in your life, do you trust him? See, God says, just be obedient to me right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next month, next year, what you're going to do. Focus on today. Focus on listening to my voice today. Focus, fo focus on, on letting me be your Lord right now. Let me guide you right now. See, our prayer needs to be, God, show me your will for today. Show me your will for today, God. What do you seek for me to do? Help me not to, help me not to get so wrapped up in the future. Help me not to get, you know, so, so occupied with what hasn't even happened yet. It's so far ahead Lord, but help me just to be obedient right now. <laughs> help me to take heed now in my life. Help me to submit now. Help me to surrender now. See, to trust in the Lord with all our heart means that we can't place our own right to understand above his right to direct our lives the way he sees fit. We need to avoid our own mindset, don't we? Our own understanding, our own understanding simply will not at all bear the full weight of reality. It can't bear it. It wasn't, it was never intended to. There's things that we will not understand. There's things that today people will never ever understand. It doesn't matter how long you study whatever it is. There's things that you will not understand in life. That's why God is God. There is none like him. You can't figure him out. So what does he mean that for us to not lean on our own understanding? It means that you don't need to try to figure things out in life. Stop, stop trying to find an answer to why it is the way it is. And God said, just start following me. Don't figure it out. That's not your job. That's not what I've called you to do. What I've called you to do is follow. And what I promise to do is direct you.
Not only do we need to trust him, as Solomon says, but we must acknowledge him. Solomon says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Number one, we need to acknowledge his existence. Hebrews 11, verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible. He says, For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. He rewards those who seek after him. See, not only believing in Him, but knowing Him, being a friend of God as we sing, appreciating Him. What does that mean? Seek Him first. In anything that you may do, seek Him first. Whatever you normally do to help you in your decision-making in life, seek God first. Seek His direction Seek His will. We need to acknowledge His existence. We also need to acknowledge His glory. 1 Corinthians 10.31, Paul says, So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do everything for the glory of God. Do everything as unto God, right? When you, when you work as unto the Lord, how many of you know that you work differently? When you really, really set your mind on working as, as unto the Lord, you work differently. When you work as unto man, how many know you can get tired out really fast? You can get burnt out. If you've, ever, if you've ever felt like, you've, like you were just burnt out, this may be what's taking place in your life. Maybe, maybe you need to set your mind on working as unto the Lord while you're serving, while you're working in, in, the, in the children's ministry, while you're ushering, while you're greeting people while you're praying for someone, while you're working in the media, whatever you may be doing, try working as unto the Lord. God, I'm going to give my best because you have given your best. I'm going to give my best. I know that I'm tired, Lord. I came to church and I'm tired. But I'm going to give my best to you. Why? Because you continue to give your best to me. You don't, you don't stop. You've never told me, you know what, son, daughter, I'm burnt out. I got nothing left for you today. You got you to gotta, you gotta go elsewhere if you want some uplifting or some encouragement because I don't have it. <laughs> I gave it all away. God would never say that to us. But many times we may have that attitude when we serve <laughs> And we think, I'm just so burnt out. I got, I got nothing left. Well, start focusing on the Lord. Start, start focusing and acknowledging his glory. God is going to give you everything that you need. Paul also adds in Colossians 3.17, he says, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let me know that God is all-knowing. He knows all things. You can't hide anything from him. I mean, know that we can, you know, as, as, as teenagers, you know, you could, you, you know, even as young adults, you know, you can hide things from your parents. You can, you can do things in, in even the same home as your parents, and your parents may have no clue what you're doing. 
But how many know that you can't hide from God? You can't hide from God. You can't, you can't, you can't keep anything a secret from him. Why? Because he knows all things. I'm sure you've, maybe, you know, uh, moms, you've told your kids, you know, you wait, you wait till I tell your dad what you did. Why? Because dad doesn't know what the kid did. He doesn't, he doesn't know that, that you know, you know he, he tried to, you know, I don't know, you know, light the garage on fire. He has no idea. But God knows. God knows what took place. Why? Because he's all-knowing. Many times we try to or may have a mindset of that God has the same restrictions that we have, but he doesn't. He sees everything. We need to acknowledge his glory. Lastly here, I want to look at the rewards of following God's teachings. We all love rewards. We all love to to receive, right? A reward is receiving something. I like to receive, you like to receive, we all do. And there's rewards in following Christ. There's blessings. And that's what we've been looking at. The privileges and the promises that we have when we partner with God. And so we're going to look at the, re- the rewards of following God's teachings. Number one is a fulfilled life. How many of you seek a fulfilled life? Proverbs 3, verse 1, says, Store my commands in your heart. It says, If you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Your life will be satisfying. You won't be like the Rolling Stones, right? I can't get no satisfaction. You're going to find satisfaction in the Lord, amen? You're going to find it. Why? Because you've allowed, you've allowed God, amen, to direct you and to guide you. And guess what? God doesn't make any wrong turns. And God is not going to let you make any wrong turns in life. You have to believe that. Like I said, if you, could, if you could trust God like you, like you can trust your mapping system on your phone, we would be all right. We would be just fine. And we need to remind ourselves, we need to, we need to think about that when it comes to God guiding our lives. Because how many know that, that we have to have reference points in our lives? I do. When it comes to remembering things, I need reference points. I need, you know, help, you know, li- little helpers to, to remind me, amen, of who God is and what he seeks to do for me. And so for me, I, you know, I'm telling you, I guarantee it, the next time that I use my map on my phone, I'm going to think if I would just allow God to direct me like my phone does. I'm going to think it. Hopefully you will too. Let it be a reminder for you and I to be obedient to the Lord. Not only do we have the reward of a fulfilled life, but we have the reward of favor with God. Favor with God, but it doesn't stop there. It says favor with God and man. See, as you submit under the authority of God and under those that God has placed over you, Favor will follow you. Proverbs 3, verse 4 in our text says, You will find favor with both God and people. That means, yes, you will find favor even at your place of employment. You will find favor wherever you go. As you submit yourself under the authority of God, 
and under the authority that God has placed over your life, even in the secular world, you're going to have favor, not only with God, but with people. You're going to have favor. It's going it's to extend to everywhere you go. And people are going to look at your life and they're going to see, wow, how do, how do they get the things that they have? That's favor. It's favor. How did they move into that position and they've only been here a year? That's favor. Because you weren't the one arguing. Because you weren't the one saying, I don't really want to be here. Because you weren't the one saying, I ain't, ain't going to listen to him or her. You weren't the one doing that. God's going to give you favor in your life. See, favor follows faithfulness. It truly does. As you are faithful in Submitting yourself under that authority, favor is going to follow. Favor is going to follow you everywhere you go. You're not, you're not going to want to get away from favor. You're not going to try to run away. Why? Because you're going to love every moment of it. As you are faithful, favor is going to be following you everywhere you go. It's going to make you want to be even more faithful and even more and do more for God and be obedient just a little more. God, I'm seeing what you're doing in my life, and I'm loving it. I like this. Well, God says it's because you were obedient. It's because you allowed the guidance in your life. You stopped trying to do things on your own. Check out what Psalm 30, verse 5 says. His favor is for a lifetime. <laughs> I love that. Psalm 30, verse 5. His favor is for a lifetime. It doesn't have to stop, in other words. You may think, well, how long is this going to last? Until I, you know, start doing or start acting the, you know, my old self again? Don't think about that. Don't wrap your minds around things that haven't even happened. You haven't lost God's favor, so don't think about when it's going to go away. Because God's word says that it's going to follow you, and not only is it going to follow you, but it's going to follow you forever, for the rest of your life. And you stand on that. Stand on that promise. And say, I'm not losing this favor. I'm not losing it. I don't care what you say. No, this is not coming to an end. My favor, my favor does not have an expiration date. It's going to keep going as I continue to follow God. And of course, number three, the reward of following God's teachings is success. See, God is a God of success. He is. God is not. God does not fail, right? He does not fail. What is the opposite of failure? Success. God does not fail. So if God does not fail, what is the opposite of, fail, of failure? Success. God is a God of success, church. He is. I don't know what you've been taught in your life or what you think in your mind, but God is a God of success. He doesn't know how to lose. And you as his child are going to inherit everything that God is. Every, every battle he wins, guess who wins as well? You and I. His children win, amen?
You get a promotion at your job and you get a, you get a big old raise, you know, $20 an hour more. Guess who wins as well? Your kids. They're like, cha-ching. <laughs> it's going to be some good birthdays now. <laughs> It's no different in our life with God. Every win for him is a win for us. And God does not lose. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. I don't know how else to put it any plainer. There's no way of making it any simpler than that. He says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. They will. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ever ask or think, right? That's who he is. And as Paul writes in Romans, he's on my side. He's on your side. God knows what is best for you and I as the worship team comes forward tonight. See, we're talking about partnering with God. Working with God. Working alongside Him. God cares for you. He's got a great plan and purpose. But God says, let's, let's work together. We love working together. We love help. Everyone loves assistance in whatever you may be doing. You know, whether it be a, a, a project you're working on. Maybe it's an event here at the church. We love help. I mean, how many of you would, would be enthusiastic if, if uh, Saturday we called for everyone to come help us set up, I don't know, canopies and stuff outside, and you were the only one who showed up? You were the only one here. How would you feel? You'd feel discouraged. You'd feel like, am I, am I really going to be the only one doing this? No one else can help. No, no one else had an opportunity to come help today. We love help. We love it. We encourage it. And God says, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. Don't reject me. Why would you reject help? Why would you reject direction in your life? All right, so maybe it's not the way that you intended it to be. Maybe it isn't the way that we thought in our minds it was going to work out. Well, try to get over it. Try to get past that. And start thinking about God in his glory, God in his power, God in his love, God in, 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 his, in his, his, his all-knowing. Okay, maybe it didn't go the way I thought it was going to, but you know what? That means that God has something better up ahead for me. He's got a door that he wants me to go through. And I can't wait. I can't wait to go through that door. Because I know that it's a door that only God can open in my life. I can't wait. I'm excited. Like when you walk through the doors here. I'm excited. I'm expecting God to do great things. And you continue to do that. And you continue to live that way. Why? Because God is going to continue He's going to continue 
to follow through. He's going to continue to do his part. And as we allow God to direct our lives, we're going to continue to experience his supernatural power at work in us. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what God has in store for you and I. I'm excited. Why wouldn't you be? You would have to be crazy to not be excited. You would have to be out of your mind to think that God has anything but good for you. Because you, you, you know him, you know his word. So why would you think otherwise? And why is it so hard for us to allow God to guide you and I? Why is it so difficult to just trust him? Just trust him. Try it. Try it. I promise he won't let you down. I promise he won't forsake you. I promise he's not going to hurt you. I promise. I promise that God will do what he says he is planning to do. It's up to you and I. It's up to you and I. Choice is yours this morning, as every, this evening, as every head is bowed, every eye closed.